In our last episode, we explored the cargo hold in the research lab, but we didn't find any generators in there. We've only destroyed one, which means there are two more to go. Today, we'll tackle robotics assembly. This time, we'll bring Soma with us. We can approach her and say, I need some help in the robot assembly area. You in? Heck yeah. I can take apart and put together a protectron with my eyes shut. I'll go with you. Lead on. To find robot assembly, we head across the catwalk to the western side of the engineering core. Robot assembly is the large circular door in the middle of the wall with the hologram of a support room outside. As soon as we enter, Soma gets right to work. Well, isn't this fancy? All these shiny machines and such. Gotta find a generator, huh? Let's see. How about we start with that teleporter thing? All right, Soma, sounds good. But first, I want to get these crystals. This place is incredible. Can you imagine having stuff like this in the wasteland? You'd even be a match for the Brotherhood of Steel. Okay, that's cool. Can I go back and get those crystals now? I'm not totally sure what I'm doing here, but I'll try and tinkle with it. You just make sure I don't get shot, okay? Uh-oh. So much for the crystals. We get attacked by drones from the ground floor. We quickly put an end to the drones while Soma continues to tinker with the teleporter. Suddenly it begins to glow. And then... Oh! Soma! Oh, great! She tripped the alarm! Heading down to the assembly floor, we have to fight off another wave of Guardian drones. We see that Soma has been teleported to the ledge opposite. All right, now that things have quieted down, I'll see if there's something up here I can push to stop more of those tin cans from showing up. Maybe I can turn off some other stuff too, and maybe I'll find a way back down. You keep looking for that generator. You think anything in here can prove useful? Well, if this is where they make the robots, we may be able to discover some way to weaken or control them. Be on the lookout for any gizmos or schematics. Right. Gizmo's schematics. I'll keep a lookout. Well, now that Soma's off doing her thing, we can backtrack and finally loot everything we passed up earlier. Back at the top level near to the entrance, we find a container filled with alien goods, a table strewn with green alien crystals, and a little box covered in yellow large alien crystals. We find one more chest to the southeast, and with that we finally looted everything. Heading down the stairs and walking behind them, we see the entrance to a conveyor belt covered in robot parts. The robot parts are being fed into this conveyor belt from some chamber beyond, but it's a dead end back here. Heading back out to the factory floor, we see some alien workers milling about, probably heading off to find some help. We can turn around to the south to loot another container, and passing through a door to the west, we see another teleporter, but these are down right now. Looks like someone's going to be fixing them later. There's a stack of alien epoxy on a doodad near to this door, and close by, we find more on a table next to another chest. We find alien power cells on the ground, and alien power modules on the shelf. The alien power modules are the ammunition for all of the new weapons that come with the Mothership Zeta deals. See, but alien power cells, which irritatingly look identical to the power modules, are a much more rare ammunition used only by the alien blaster and the fire lance, two unique alien weapons that we find on Earth. But we'll cover the alien blaster a little bit later. It is, however, important to keep an eye open for alien power cells because there's a finite number of them in the entire game. We can only loot a total of 365 alien power cells on the ship, 44 of which we find here in Robot Assembly. The conveyor belt then goes up, and the robots go through some sort of processing machine. We can follow the conveyor belt into the next room, looting more alien crystals along the way. We see two more teleportation rooms to the west and southwest, which again we can't use just yet, and one more container on the ground, near to a healing archway that we can modify to improve its healing capacity. When done with this room, we can move on to the next by passing through a door to the north, which winds into a room to the east. Turning north, we see more worker drones, and Soma takes out a ceiling-mounted turret with a plasma grenade. Okay, 
but we still find one remaining. The conveyor belt from the last room enters down into this one, and we see that the robots come out on the other side more complete. In a little nook past some machinery to the south, we find a couple of shelves filled with alien biogel. But while looting back here, we hear explosions. Uh-oh, Soma, what are you doing? It's a Guardian drone, attacking from the northwest. After it's destroyed, we see a control on the wall here. We became familiar with these as we explored the engine room in a previous video. We'll choose the option to remotely overload turret circuitry. That causes nearby turrets to explode, which should make things easier. While we were exploring the nooks behind the conveyor belt, we found a path that took us down the eastern side of it. At the very end, we see a unique scene. Behind one of the supports towards the very end, we find a teddy bear, smoking cigarettes, watching television on a teeny tiny TV set with a garden gnome drinking vodka. Looks like whomever's responsible for posing toys in compromising positions back on Earth found their way onto the ship. But this is otherwise a dead end, so retracing our steps, we can head back to the other side of the conveyor ramp just in time to get attacked by another support drone. After we clear this room, we only see one open door, and inside we find a fully powered up teleportation matrix. Soma must have finally gotten it working. This teleports us to a platform directly above us. On some nearby canisters and doodads, we find some alien crystals and Soma. Well, that's the last of those turrets. Looks like we've got a problem though. The aliens have shut down the teleporters, and I can't bring them back up. We may have to look around for another way through. I am open to suggestions. Hmm, maybe we could destroy a section of the assembly line and punch through to the next room. Other than that, your guess is as good as mine. Punch through the assembly line, eh? Well, I don't have any better ideas, so let's give it a shot. But now that we're on this upper level, we can take the opportunity to backtrack. There was an entire other wing that we missed because we were on the bottom level. So heading south, we can go through a hallway to the next room where we find a chest on the ground with an alien atomizer on top of it. But sadly, that's our only reward for coming all the way back here. So heading back north, sidestepping all of the alien workers running around. We can use the one teleporter that Soma got working that we used to get on up here to begin with to head back down to the bottom floor. Heading to the northeast, to that conveyor belt receptacle, we see a hologram hovering just outside an electronics access panel. The assembly line electronics can be wired to overload after a slight second delay. An overload should cause a detonation and provide a way through. If we choose to overload the assembly, we can step back The conveyor belt stops, and we find a huge hole in the receptacle, which leads into the next room. We see robot pieces littering the ground in the adjacent room, and we find enemies. Goodness, 
After the dust settles, we find ourselves on an elevated platform overlooking the factory floor. Up here, we can loot a table covered in alien epoxy and biogel, and we loot one chest near to a powered-down teleporter. We find one final vial of alien epoxy, but that's it for this platform. We'll head down these stairs and start looting the corpses of the aliens and drones we killed to get here. On one of them, we find a drone control device. This is the device we need to hack into the drone recharging pods. We can immediately test this out as we find plenty of support drones in their charging pods here. To release them, we simply activate the drone pod. The pod successfully links with your drone control device. If we activate the pod... Oh. Well, let's try this again. That's better. Oh! <laughs> well, hey, that's a great way to kill the worker drones without karma loss. Thanks, support drone. If we try to activate another one, we see the message, you cannot activate another pod while the drone control device is active. So we really only get one at a time. We find another chest on the ground against the northwestern wall, and that's it for this wing. So to continue, we travel to the southeast, around that platform we previously explored, where we find a hallway with doors to the left and doors to the right. Here, Soma betrays some of her scavenger instincts. Wow, I'd love to get my hands on some of this equipment. I could make a fortune back on Earth. And then she runs off to the east, following her down, back to the engine core. Aha, there's the generator. Just like the last one, we activate it by pressing the big control button in the middle of this console. The cylinder in the center rises, then we just go around to each of the core coolant switches and tag them. As they slide down, we can back up for safety. to think about. Now let's get the hell out of here. Behind this staircase is a door. There's a small nook to the right. And here we find a large stack of small alien crystals on a shelf. And then we find a nook to the left with a small stack of large alien crystals. Directly behind this is another chest upon which is more alien epoxy. And when done, we can go west down the hallway and activate the teleporter on the ground. This teleports us to one of those teleporter rooms that we passed at the very beginning of robotic assembly. This is, in effect, a shortcut. And we can head east out the door back to the engineering core. As soon as we do, the core gets rushed by aliens. Yeah! Only one more of those generators is all you need to take care of. And we can get to the bridge and kick some alien butt! Looks like we're making the aliens nervous, but they sure sent a meager force to try and retake this engineering core. Our companions have the place pretty well defended. We see that again, they've been hard at work while we were in robotics assembly. We find some buff out and pool balls with a toaster inside a bin near the door and two new frag mines on a nearby shelf, as well as a bunch more random scrap. Heading into the northern room, we find two metal boxes stacked on top of each other to the west, an ammunition box on top of another box near to the northern door, next to a minigun, a mini nuke sitting in a chair next to the workbench to the west. Beneath the workbench, we find two boxes of 44 magnum rounds, and to the right, a box of 32 caliber rounds. Turning around, we find a small stash of chems directly behind us, some medics, jet, and radaway in a box. Turning around again, we find an ammunition box underneath this table, and just to the left, a tidy stash of pulse grenades in a wooden box on the ground. Heading towards the stairs, we see a giddy up buttercup. What's that doing there? Heading downstairs, we can loot two frag mines underneath a table, and then moving south towards Toshiro, we see two ammo boxes on the ground beneath a table, upon which is another giddy up buttercup. This one we can loot. So the one on the ledge is a model, but this one is a functional toy. That makes two Giddy Up Buttercups that we've been able to loot so far from this alien ship. Perfect for player home decorations. And that's it for now. We see that after having destroyed the second generator, the engine core is a bit of a mess. We see sparkling electricity round every corner, on the bottom floor and on the top. 
and all of this crackling electricity makes Elliot nervous. Hurry up taking out that last generator if you can. I don't feel comfortable staying near that giant engine core for much longer. Still one generator to blow up. Figure you should be off doing that instead of hanging around here. One more generator and we can get to the top of this ship. Then we can hit the aliens where it really hurts. Next, we'll head to the maintenance level. We see a teleportation pad to the left of robot assembly with some sort of spanner holographic symbol floating above. When we activate it, we arrive in a small room with another deactivated teleportation device. There's one chest in this room near a door, and heading out the door, we arrive in a hallway lined with shelves. Here we find some food, and then we go out a western doorway to another hallway. Turning east, we see two more chests on the ground, but this looks like a dead end. We do see some doors to the west, unlike most of the other doors we've seen so far. Turning north, we find a platform, and to the left of it, oh, it's an open door with Sally and the Guardian drone that we released inside Robot Assembly. She is fiddling with something on the wall inside this room, lined with garbage? Hey, I didn't know you were exploring too. You don't know where we are, do you? What an incredible smell you've discovered. Yeah, it's kind of stinky in here. Did you cut the cheese? Nice Star Wars reference there. We're lost, aren't we, Sally? No way! Well, maybe a little. I bet we can find something neat, though. Let's just get out of here. Yeah, you're probably right. Wait, did you feel that? We're moving. Cool. Oh, the door closes behind us, and we appear to be moving. A mobile trash can? Oh. Yeah, I'd say they noticed us. What was that? Cows? We got cows! I think that was a twister reference. Oh, they somehow got a pre-war atomic V8. Aliens, look Uh-oh. We lost Sally. Whoa. Gotta cling to the walls. Don't wanna fall. Yeah. and we cripple one of our limbs. Looks like that trash car, or whatever it was, dumped us out in some sort of sewage and waste room. We have to use a stim pack to fix our broken leg. Looking up, we see the car hanging out of this vent. No way we can get back up there. Hey, hey, are you okay? Skin, knee, or anything like that? I'm fine, no thanks to you. I'm sorry, okay? How was I supposed to know this would happen? What did you get us into this time? I think we're in the trash section of the ship. Ugh, yucky. Let's go back the way we came. You really must have hit your head. Unless you're Captain Cosmos and have a rocket pack we can use, that's not happening. Well, I guess we should split up. Okay, I'll try and find a way to help you get out of there. Otherwise, see you back at the core. I always wonder why in movies and video games, they think that splitting up is a good idea. But nevertheless, Sally runs off and we can't get up there to that platform, so we gotta find another way out of here. This room is covered wall to wall with garbage. 
I walked around hoping that I would see a safe or some sort of chest, like we found in the cargo hold, but no, there's nothing interesting here. To leave, we open a door to the west. Heading west, we walk down a pathway where we see some sort of garbage-smashing piston. On the ground nearby are some human remains. Looks like we're not the first one to try and navigate through waste disposal. There is a button here that we can use to turn off this piston, but we don't find anything up here. Continuing to the south, we have to walk through thick steam. It must be sweltering down here. Turning left, we see a bunch of these pistons. And maybe if we time things just right... Ooh, okay, I got hurt a little bit. In the very back, we're rewarded with a first aid box, a very easy locked safe with goodies inside, and a hard locked safe with a stash of caps and chems. But now we've got to get out of here. Wait for it. Oh, no, no, no. That could have gone more smoothly. Continuing forward, the hallway ends at a door to the west. We step forward into some pipes, and walking south, we hear Sally. What's this button? Whoa! Hey, uh, can you hear me down there? Yeah, I can hear ya. I don't think you can hear me. On the ground nearby, we find a first aid kit and an average locked safe. Moving south, we turn west to find another door. We see a guardian drone on the other side. Moving forward, we can step through the trash and garbage. To the right, there's a healing archway. And then moving west, we open a door into a larger room. We see garbage and boxes all over. There's a button near to something. And when we press it, we just turn on some electricity. We see blood on the ground, leading to a door to the north. As soon as we walk through, we get attacked by aliens on the roof. How many was that? One? Two? Continuing down the catwalk, we can round a corner. There he is. The alien's dead, let's explore this room. Wrecked cars, boxes, garbage, and all sorts of containers. Not much we can interact with, but if we explore to the southeast, we find a military footlocker. Inside is the Anchorage Quartermaster Shipment and General Chase's overcoat. The shipment is an audio tape. General Constantine Chase, Anchorage Command, encoded message 457980A, decryption applied. These crates contain only a portion of the items you requested on 09-1777. Due to the increase in demand, we were unable to fill the entire order. Please distribute this equipment based on greatest need, and we'll attempt to send the rest of your requests as soon as possible. Enclosed, you'll also find our new improved LAS-009 General's Overcoat. Hope it will serve as an appropriate upgrade. General Victor Breckenridge, U.S. Army, Quartermaster. Command Forward Depot, Oregon. We remember General Chase. He played a prominent role in the Operation Anchorage simulation. He wore a stunning jacket in that DLC. I remember admiring it, and it looks like we now have our own copy. It has a DR of 20, which is pretty decent for a clothing item, and grants plus 1 to charisma, plus 10 to small guns, and plus 5 to speech. It's quite an attractive coat. It looks a lot like Colonel Autumn's uniform, only it's got a winterized Operation Anchorage coloring. Continuing on, we find a first aid kit on a container to the west, and that's all we find here. To leave, we can follow this track around to the south and open the door into the next room. Here we find even more blood on the floor. Watch out, more coming from behind you. I'll try to block their progress. Closing the door to bar their entry, we can head towards the windows to peer through them. We don't see anyone, though we do see some chems. A buff out on a stim pack on this box. There's a first aid kit on the ground nearby, and I think these aliens are suffering from pathing issues. We see their shimmering forms beyond the wall, but they never make it this way. But then we see more in the next room. The other guys don't seem to be able to find us, so opening the door, we can head out and round the corner to get rid of them. The 
the alien's dead, we can retrace our steps back into the room with all the blood and out a western door. We go up a staircase and down a hallway until we hear Sally again. Give me a minute. I'll try to get these doors open for you. Okay! She removes the force field on a nearby door. This opens up into a room with one of those trash compacting pistons. We see that it's already destroyed a guardian drone. Wow, that looks dangerous. See if you can turn it off while I try and figure this door out. Well, we do see a big switch over here. Activating this, sure enough, turns off the piston. Sally turns off the next force field, so heading through the hallway, we enter the next room with, again, another one of these pistons. Uh-oh, I think they found a way to get to you. I'll try and get the door open fast. Just as we flip the switch, we get charged by aliens. They must have come from that platform up there. Sadly, we don't find a way up there. Continuing south through the tunnel, we enter the last room. This time we're ready. Hang on, one of these buttons has got to open that door. And sure enough, aliens come through the door of the top platform. South through the door leads to another room with those big green drainage pipes. To continue, we move west. Their radios got quiet all of a sudden. I'd be careful if I were you. Uh-oh. We see one of those big circular doors, and peering through it... What is that flickering circular thing? And then we see the aliens. I told you so! Ambush! repulse their final charge and put the Nova Surge to good use. We can then get to looting. There are two chests lining the perimeter of this room, one to the southwest and one to the northeast. There's also a healing arch that we can modify to the south. We see that that flickering circular thing was a new piece of alien technology. It looks like a portable, projectable force field. I bet we'll see a lot more of those later on. And finally, we see a control to the east. Activating it gives us captive recorded log number 19. This is my final message. If this doesn't work, I hope someone gets this recording and can bring it back to Earth. I've been able to figure out how to use some of the alien devices, like this recorder, and I think I know what they want with our world. They mean to take as many of us as they can and change us into some sort of abomination. Many of us have been killed because of their experiments. They've been keeping us in cells, and then moving us one by one to their experimentation labs. I've managed to escape, but they are looking for me. You've got to send help up here. As far as I can tell, they're never going to stop until they've captured hundreds, maybe thousands of us. The good news is that they're totally reliant on technology. Without it, they're no tougher than you or I. A small, well-equipped force could take this ship and free all the prisoners on board. That's your best chance. I've got to keep moving, so I need to hide this tape. Good luck to all of us, and Godspeed. Oh my god. Is he right? Contrary to all of Elliot's wild theories, if this guy is right, then the aliens are genetically modifying us, interbreeding with us, using us as some sort of genetic base for their abominations. And now we realize why we found human bones at the very beginning. Those bones must have been his remains. He escaped while the aliens were experimenting on him, found his way down here, recorded this message only to die to one of those trash compactor pistons. Heading out the door, we hear Sally. We're almost out of here. I'll meet you up ahead. Hurry! In this room is two more chests, one to the north and one to the south, and then opening the door, we round a corner, head up some stairs, to hear Sally in trouble. Go away, meanie. Just you wait till my friend gets here. I love this Nova Surge. With the alien dead, we can head towards the door, and Sally turns off the force field. Okay, let's get out of this place. Well, that was fun. What now? Let's get back to the core and never speak of this again. 
We won't have to speak of it. We probably reek by now, so thanks for nothing, Sally. Hey, it's not like this was a wasted trip. Check out the storage closet I found here. All right, let's get back to the core. Sure, there's a teleporter nearby that I found. Raisha. Well, that Sally runs south towards the teleporter, but she mentions something about a supply closet nearby. Heading west, sure enough, we find a big supply closet. And every single shelf is littered with goodies. To the right, we find four first aid kits, filled with all sorts of chems, bobby pins, and purified water. To the left, we only find one first aid kit on a shelf. And then directly in front of us, we find three more first aid kits and... What is this? A samurai sword? I can't believe it! We found Toshiro's sword! Toshiro's samurai sword is a completely unique weapon, the only one of its kind in the entire game. It does higher damage than most other swords, dealing 24 raw damage compared to 10 from the Chinese officer's sword. This makes it the second best sword in the game, beat only by Jingwei's shock sword from Operation Anchorage, which deals 35 raw damage. The shock sword also has an electrical damage over time which really makes it a superior weapon, having 82.8 DPS compared to the Samurai Sword's 55.4. But where the Samurai Sword shines is in its critical damage. This sucker deals a whopping 40 critical damage compared to the Shock Sword's 25. It also costs far fewer action points in VATS, 19 compared to the Shock Sword's 28, which means its damage per action point is 2.5, very close to the Shock Sword's 2.9 and it has nearly double the durability of the Shock Sword, 833 compared to 486. So the Samurai Sword is indeed a viable weapon for a melee build. But now we've got a moral quandary. This is a beautiful sword, a fine addition to any collection, but we know whom this sword belongs to. We could keep it to ourselves. Toshiro would never know, but the right thing would be to give it to him. Activating the teleportation matrix to the engineering core, we can head back to find Toshiro. We see that our companions have yet again been hard at work. Inside the northern room, we find a teddy bear, holding the beer and wearing the brass knuckles that we saw yesterday. Heading down the stairs, in that Nuka-Cola crate behind the generator, we find two Nuka-Cola Quantum. There's a new box filled with chems next to the garden gnomes. And if we're honest, we can give Toshiro his sword. I know you can't understand me, but I thought you might want this sword. With that, Toshiro takes his sword and equips it. Well, at least we've done our good deed of the day. Two generators down, one to go. We'll find the third and final generator in the cryo lab, which we will tackle in tomorrow's video. I publish many videos each week, so if you want to make sure you don't miss the next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop where I sell unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. You can find my designs on t-shirts that come in a wide array of colors and in a variety of men's and women's sizes, and also on a bunch of other stuff like mugs, posters, pillows, etc. If interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a sponsor here on YouTube or one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with Episode 6.